The notorious killer from those ISIS hostage videos has been unmasked. Known as Jihadi John for months, his real identity wasn't known publicly until today. According to the Washington Post, the knife-wielding extremist who's been beheading people on camera is a 26-year-old university graduate from a middle-class British family. The CBC's Nala Ayed has more. Nala. Peter, U.S. and British authorities have apparently known his name for months. This is James Wright Foley. From that first video, citizen. his accent Your gave country. him away as British, starting a multinational race to unmask him. The BBC learns the identity of Jihadi John. The British Here, they took to calling Britain's most wanted man Jihadi John. And with every gruesome video that captured his brutality, the mystery deepened. Because of your insistence now, according to reports, the man wielding the knife has a name. Mohammed Mwazi, British citizen, born in Kuwait, 26 years old and known to British authorities. He apparently lived in this West London neighborhood where people today just couldn't believe it. You don't expect it to be on your doorstep. That's what shocked me. I'm, I'm telling him it's not jihad. You kill the people, it's jihad, no, it's not jihad, sorry. He reportedly arrived in Syria in 2012, but only surfaced publicly last year in a series of highly produced videos, several featuring him personally beheading a foreign journalist or aid worker. Near impossible to reconcile with the description given by an acquaintance at an organization opposed to the so-called war on terror. I'm pretty sorry. I didn't expect... Uh... He's, he was such a beautiful young man. When are we going to finally learn that when we treat people as if they're outsiders, they will inevitably feel like outsiders and they will look for belonging elsewhere. The group says Mwazi was harassed and pressured by British intelligence agency MI5 to become an informant after being suspected and questioned, then prevented from leaving the country. But he did leave and the families now want justice. We want to go watch him be prosecuted and convicted in an American court of law and then spend the rest of his days in a supermax prison where he'll live in isolation. At the Central London University where he completed a computer degree, disbelief. That is a shock. That's a massive shock. But also a matter of factness about a story, though exceptionally infamous, they have heard a version of before. People that have such well-founded beliefs, they're going to continue with those beliefs. No one is going to change their opinions. British authorities will not confirm any of this. The man in the mask is still the subject of a police investigation. Peter. All right, Nala, thank you. The CBC's Nala Ayed in London tonight.